This morning, bushfire devastation. Firefighters attempt to find out just how many homes have been lost as the military comes to the aid of stricken residents. The New South Wales town cut off, left in the darkness. Blazers in Victoria threatened to cross the border and merge into a mega fire, the operation to rescue people stranded in isolated communities before dangerous conditions return. And deadly shark attack. A West Australian diver mourned after he was taken by a great white. The search now for his body. This is 7 News with Angie Asimus. Good morning. Firefighters are trying to gain access to bushfire-ravaged towns as communities across the fire zones remain isolated. Dozens of homes have been destroyed since the weekend, but once crews on the ground are expecting to find much more devastation. Weekend Sunrise presenter Matt Doran is in Eden on the New South Wales south coast, a town which is cut off. A hellish orange shroud blankets the road to Eden. The coastal New South Wales town cut off and in near darkness as a mega blaze terrorises the community. But their spirit remains unbroken. From the bridge of HMAS Adelaide, the coast is completely obscured. It's bringing much needed supplies to a region isolated with major roads still closed and towns plunged into darkness. And the sky, as you might be able to see behind me, is almost the colour of my fire gear and we're being covered in soot and ash. Uh, extraordinarily, it is just gone at three o'clock in the afternoon. And the only reason you can see me right now is because of our camera light. I've never seen Eden like this. Brings tears to my eyes. Inland at Batlow, a firestorm surged, destroying almost everything in its path. Crews fought hard as exploding gas bottles threatened to ignite the local petrol station. It is damaged, but um, the, the surrounding houses here and, and across the road, we've managed to, to prevent it getting to those. Locals grateful. Firefighters are absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. But tragically, one man was killed. David Harrison died helping friends defend their home. Thankfully, no one else is missing, but the destruction is staggering. Scores of homes have been lost since the weekend. We know that there's quite a number of other structures, sheds. The Defence Force has now opened up its bases across the East Coast for displaced residents. Military helicopters are helping evacuate residents stranded in Victoria's Alpine regions as firefighters fear fire fronts will merge with blazes in New South Wales. In South Australia, there are fears dozens of homes have been lost in the deadly Kangaroo Island bushfire. Defence personnel are on their way to help there too. As Australians dig deep to support firefighters pouring $30 million into a fundraiser started by comedian Celeste Barber to help the Rural Fire Service. Amazing. We're really excited. We're just getting all stuff together now for um, to send out to the fireys. Desperately needed with the bushfire threat Far from over. I'm joined now by reporters Samantha Brett at the New South Wales Rural Fire Service headquarters and Nathan Templeton at Swan Reach, the base camp for hundreds of firefighters in Victoria. First to you, Sam, what is the situation this morning? Angie, well, quite incredibly, there is a little bit of rain about hopefully falling where it is needed most in those bushfire ravaged towns. But I can tell you it's a bit of an unusual morning here at the Rural Fire Service in that there are no emergency warnings. There are no fires either that are at watch and act warnings. So uh, we have 132 fires now burning across the state at advice level. But there are still two fires that firefighters are really keeping a close eye on. So one of them is that border fire that is bo uh, burning burning north of the Victorian border, south of that little town of Eden. We saw those ominous red clouds there yesterday all afternoon. Residents being told to leave, but mass confusion there. Uh, very, very dangerous. So that is certainly a community on edge today. And then there is that Green Wattle Creek fire. Now that has burned through 280,000 hectares of land and that is burning north of Mittagong. Uh, now while that uh, those conditions there have eased, I have been told that that fire is extremely unpredictable. So certainly with the easing conditions today, firefighters will be doing everything they can to strengthen containment lines, to uh, get those power lines back up and running and to really try and help rebuild those communities, some of them who have lost everything, Angie. And Sam, the Prime Minister has come under fire for his handling of the crisis. He's now set up a special authority to concentrate on the recovery. 
He has, Angie. So he has asked our former AFP chief, Andrew Colvin, to set up a national bushfire recovery agency. So hopefully that will be able to coordinate uh, the recovery effort, but certainly is going to be a very long and difficult recovery, Angie. OK, now let's go to Nathan. Nathan, what's the latest in Victoria? Well, Angie, the weather has also been a little more kind here uh, in Gippsland. We had light but steady rain for about 24 hours now. That rain doesn't do a lot uh, in terms of putting out the fires. Uh, and in fact, it can be a bit of a hindrance for things like backburning and making conditions more tricky for firefighters. But what it does do is just ease that immediate threat for a little while. So it's a, a slight reprieve for firefighters and the people in this area. Uh, but really, everyone is bracing for what they call spike days later in the week on Thursday uh, here in the east. It's going to be up in the high 20s and then into the mid 30s on Friday. So people are pretty wary uh, and anxious about what is coming. But at the moment, a little bit uh, of a rest for them. Now, if we split the main fire zones of Victoria into two distinct parts, there's really uh, the northeast of, east of the state around the high country and there are alpine towns uh, under threat around uh, Mount Hotham sort of area and then a little further north of that is Corriong uh, and that is that major fire up near the border which uh, it's feared could join up with the New South Wales fire. Then we come down south into the Gippsland area here uh, in the far east around Can River there is still uh, an emergency warning in place and at Malakuta where we've seen so much uh, devastation uh, we saw those beautiful pictures yesterday of those little children uh, being evacuated. They uh, were too small to board those Navy vessels and finally uh, they were choppered out by the army. The latest numbers from the State Control Centre are uh, two people have died, four still missing. That's down from six the previous day, so that is some good news. 110 homes gone, 220 buildings are gone, 18 communities uh, cut off. But really the story here is a slight lull uh, before we, it gets concerning again later in the week, Angie. OK, thank you very much to you both. South Australia's Kangaroo Island is still reeling from the fires that killed two people and wiped out a popular resort. The island's koala population was also devastated, but the community is rallying together to save the wildlife that's left. Burnt, injured and bewildered, koalas needing care are arriving by the trailer load. They're all stunned. Rick Fisher and his neighbours saved these ones from their properties, some barely clinging to life. I think this little fellow, he's too far gone. Yeah, he's too far gone. The survivors are under critical care at the Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park. It's been inundated, taking in dozens of severely burnt animals a day. Unfortunately for some of those animals, the, the best thing is uh, humane euthanasia straight away. There's just no chance. The impact on wildlife is breaking hearts. This environment has been completely, completely changed and I don't know that it will ever, ever come back and be the same. Park owner Dana has her hands full caring for these survivors around the clock. Every day they're getting pain relief, all of these guys are. Uh, we're also treating them for severe burns on a few of them, minor burns on others. This little orphan, Ash, was brought in two weeks ago when the fires first started. She suffered horrific burns to her hands and feet. Fortunately, she's on track to make a full recovery. She is a great ambassador for what we can do for some of these koalas. Hope amidst the devastation. Casey Trelaw, 7 News. In other news, a community is mourning the death of a scuba diver who was fatally mauled by a shark off Western Australia. It's believed Gary Johnson was attacked by a great white while diving near Cull Island off Esperance. His partner was treated for shock after raising the alarm. It happened just hours after a reported shark sighting in the area. Police conducted air patrols and sent down specialist divers, but a body is yet to be recovered. The search is expected to resume this morning. A grass field in Western Sydney has gone up in flames after a blaze was sparked near a popular walkway. Way, Firefighters arrived way. at Olympic Park to find grass near the Brick Pit Ring Walk well alight. It took two crews around 40 minutes to contain and extinguish the fire. Investigators found fireworks nearby and believe they may have caused that blaze. Qantas has plummeted down the annual ratings of the world's most punctual airlines, beaten by its own low-cost carrier, Jetstar Asia. 
The ranking tracks departure times and works out how many flights arrive or depart within 15 minutes of their scheduled time. The Flying Kangaroo went from 6th in 2018 to 18th in the latest edition, while Jetstar Asia was ranked 8th. Garuda Indonesia took out the top spot. While it dropped down the punctuality ratings, Qantas was named the world's safest airline in another recent report. Some of Australia's biggest stars are getting ready to walk the red carpet for the 77th Golden Globe Awards in Los Angeles. Nicole Kidman, Russell Crowe, Margot Robbie, Kate Blanchett and Tony Collette are all in the running for awards. Comedian Ricky Gervais will host the event at the Beverly Hilton for the fifth time. Guests will be served a plant-based dinner aimed at raising awareness of climate change. A number of nominees turned out to the BAFTA Tea Party in LA yesterday, including Leonardo DiCaprio. Still to come on 7 Early News, the war of words that's threatening to spiral out of control. Iran warns of swift retribution as Donald Trump stands firm. And the incredible acts of generosity as Australia digs deep for firefighters and bushfire victims. That's next. Visitors to Queensland's Fraser Island are experiencing an astonishing number of dingo encounters with more than 150 incident reports filed in just three months. Those reports include an incident where a boy was chased by the wild dogs and a woman who had her hair pulled by a dingo while she was asleep. Authorities are urging tourists not to interact with the animals. A military advisor to Iran's supreme leader has warned of swift retribution following a U.S. airstrike that killed their military commander. The advisor told CNN Iran is not seeking war but is preparing to take action against U.S. military sites. The only thing that can end this period of war is for the Americans to receive a blow that is equal to the blow they've inflicted. Afterwards, they should not seek a new cycle. Donald Trump has threatened to hit dozens of targets in Iran if they retaliate. Earlier, it's estimated more than a million people gathered in the streets of Baghdad to farewell the military leader. Six people have been killed after a car crashed into a group of German tourists in Italy. The vehicle struck the group northeast of Milan near the Austrian border. It's understood they were hit while crossing the road toward their hotel after getting off a bus. Six were pronounced dead at the scene while 11 others were taken to hospital. Local police say the driver failed a breath test and has been charged with manslaughter. At least five people have been killed and 60 others hurt following a multi-vehicle crash in the US. The pile-up happened when two delivery trucks, a tour bus and multiple cars collided on a major highway in Pennsylvania. It's understood a number of those injured are fighting for life. The cause of the crash hasn't yet been determined. Huge crowds have come together in North Korea in a show of support for the government. Hundreds of thousands attended the peaceful political rally in Pyongyang. While President Kim Jong-un didn't speak, other government ministers did, expressing frustration over stalled nuclear talks with the US. Dramatic police dash cam pictures show the moment a man jumps off a U.S. overpass to avoid being arrested. Officers in Atlanta followed the man as he zigzagged a highway and then decided to jump over a guardrail. He ran off into bushland but later turned himself in and was charged with firearm offences and drug possession. Ironically, police say they were originally pursuing a different driver for speeding when the man crashed his car and it tried to get away. Checking finance now. After a strong start to 2020, Wall Street has taken a hit as tensions rise between the US and Iran. The Dow Jones fell by 234 points. The Nasdaq dropped 78. In London, the FTSE 100 lifted by 18 points and Germany's DAX fell 167. On the commodities market, gold is trading at 1,552 US dollars an ounce. Oil is 63 US dollars a barrel. The Aussie dollar is buying just under 70 US cents, just over 75 Japanese yen and $1 for New Zealand. More than $30 million has been raised in one of the country's biggest bushfire fundraisers. An Australian comedian started the incredible campaign as big names pledge support. Never one to just talk the talk, comedian Celeste Barber hit the shops at Tweed Heads. We're just getting all stuff together now for... um to send down to the fireys, our family have just been evacuated, so I'm a slightly stressed. On Friday night, Celeste shared photos from her mother-in-law's home in Eden and launched an appeal. We're on fire. This is hell on earth. The call went out to her millions of followers. Babe, guess what we're at? Two million. 
By lunchtime, it hit $21 million. The money, Celeste says, will be split among communities and services which need it most. People are amazing. Power to the people. Someone needed to do something, and the people do something. 11, At the Gold Coast's Magic Millions Polo, actress Rebel Wilson auctioned two lunches for $100,000. Everyone just has that helping spirit, and it's just it's hard to know what to do sometimes. Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban pledged $500,000 to rural fire services. The same from pop star Pink. The Queen praising the emergency services and those who put their lives in danger. Her granddaughter also touched by the tragedy. I mean, it's awful. It's, you know, the, the photos and the, the footage that you see is just um, devastating. Tennis star Ash Barty pledged her Brisbane International Prize money. Tennis is a sport. It's, it's a game that we play uh, and there are certainly a lot a lot of uh, bigger things going on in Australia right now that we need to take care of. As Aussies, Nathan Lyon, Pat Cummins and Mitchell Starr delivered $1,000 for every wicket claimed. Yeah! The sound of unwavering support. Tom Hartley, 7 News. Next on 7 Early News, an SCG first for Nathan Lyon has Australia in a dominant position against New Zealand in the third test and a rare milestone in the Big Bash goes down to the very last ball of the innings. Australia is firmly in control of the third test after a dominant day three against New Zealand. Nathan Lyon took his first ever fifer at the SCG as the Aussies take a mammoth lead into the fourth day. A sea of pink filled the SCG on Jane McGrath Day. On the pitch, Lyon showed why he wasn't keen to take a rest, though it didn't all go his way. Debutant Glenn Phillips was lucky, caught off ball in his 52. The tourists were eventually all out for 251 as Australia closed out the day none for 40. Obviously it's quite special to go up on the honours board and take five wickets at your home in front of your family and friends and, and play. I'll take five at one of your most favourite venues around the world. Coverage of day four starts just after sunrise on seven. A stunning century from Darcy Short has led the Hobart Hurricanes to an eight-run win over the Perth Scorchers. Short was in a typically destructive mood on his way to 103 from 70 balls, the 29-year-old bringing up the milestone off the last ball of the innings. He's got it in the air. Is it going to go all the way? It does. What a way to bring up your second Big Bash 100. In response, the Scorchers came close through some late fireworks from Jai Richardson but fell eight runs short. The Sydney Sixers left it late against the Adelaide Strikers in Coffs Harbour last night as Josh Hazelwood returned from injury, set 177 for victory. Josh Phillippe proved the match winner, his quick fire 83, leading the Sixers to a seven-wicket victory. Tonight, it's the Sydney Thunder taking on the Brisbane Heat, and you can watch it live and free across the screens of Seven. Check your local guides. Australia remains unbeaten in the inaugural ATP Cup after beating Canada in Brisbane yesterday. Kyrgios sat out the tie against Canada with a minor back problem. His replacement, John Millman, filled the void impressively with a straight sets win. Alex Dimonor then came from a set down to defeat Denis Shapovalov and clinch the tie. The Aussies now move on to the quarterfinals. World number one Ash Barty will donate all her winnings from the Brisbane International to the bushfire relief effort. A Robbie Cruz masterclass has led the Melbourne victory to a big win over the Newcastle Jets. Cruz opened the scoring against the Jets with 10 minutes off kickoff. The Socceroo then played a part in all three of victory's other goals as the men in blue ran out 4 0 winners. The win moves victory up to seventh on the table. A teenage sensation has given Liverpool a Merseyside derby win in the FA Cup third round. James Milner lasted only eight minutes against Everton before coming off with injury, but the young Liverpool side coped. 18-year-old Curtis Jones stunning the Reds crowd. Jones. Oh, magnificent. A sensational goal from one of Jurgen Klopp's teenagers here. Curtis Jones. Jones' goal giving Liverpool a 1-0 win. Chelsea's also through to the next round after beating Nottingham Forest 2-0. Next on 7 Early News, a close look at how the weather is shaping up in your part of the country. 
Prince William and Kate have joined the Queen for a Sunday morning church service. The Cambridges turn out to St Mary Magdalene Church in Sandringham. Kate's parents, Carol and Michael Middleton, also attended the service. The Duchess, her mother and the Queen all dressed to match in shades of plum. Taking a look at the weather around the country, a broad low pressure trough extending from WA to the country's southeast is generating rain and showers, while tropical lows are causing rain and storms across the northern tropics and storms are being generated across northeastern New South Wales. Around the capitals, Brisbane, partly cloudy, 30 degrees. Smoke haze expected in Sydney with a shower or two, top of 25, 23 and a shower or two for Canberra, Melbourne, 20, shower or two, sunny and 28 degrees in Adelaide, Hobart, 23 and sunny, sunny and 33 degrees in Perth and 35